Welcome, dear viewers, to Couch Warrior TV on YouTube. I'm the Couch Warrior, and you are watching The Passage, a Skyrim SE Let's Play, featuring Etienne Jorel, the Altmer Ranger. In the last episode, we went to Nilheim Tower in search of Kerway's husband, Vantis. and walked into what was a chaotic and messy ambush that obviously involved a rather sizable group of Legion soldiers. Because of our speed in getting there, um, not only Etienne's leg speed, but the leg up, that was given to us by his sister, Kerway. We were able to actually get there long before they were able to complete setting their ambush and observe them setting it up. And also... We're able to uh, take advantage of a stroke of luck. When some storm cloaks came along and kind of broke up the party. In the chaos following the battle, Etienne and Garm confronted the remaining bandits and uh, were actually able to outmaneuver them. So, here we are. <clears throat> now, in that episode, we also found a note on the bandit leader indicating that he had sold the hostage Vantus to someone named Fiola, working out of Mistwatch Keep, which is a location that had been marked on our map previously, so we know of the location. Now it's time for us to get in there and have a look around, see if we can figure out what is up. Before we do that, We have to finally get the rest that we had to forego earlier in the day. So I think what we're going to do is set up a camp here. Now in a hurry to leave last time, we, we, abandon, we abandon our rough bedroll. So we're going to be using our tent this time around. But it's going to be... It's going to be a cold campsite. We're not going to be building a fire or anything like that that might draw attention to our presence here. So it's not going to be as comfortable as it, as it could be. But it should be fine. All right. All right, let's get some rest, shall we? Okay, it's 9 p.m. Four hours will have us approaching the keep in the dead of night, which is always good. Again, Etienne is foregoing a lot of sleep in the interest of being able to attack at opportune times, but in a way, I mean, this is probably going to catch up with him in the end, because he's, he's burning it at both ends here. Um, he's not eating properly all the time, and he's not definitely not getting enough rest. He's sleeping in cold campsites, but um, he's pushing himself pretty hard on this stuff, so... 
We'll do four hours. Better take our camp with us this time. How are you? All right, let's go. Better grab a quick bite, too. <clears throat> Don't want our stomach giving us away. All right. Well, the lights on are, are on in the tower. Something going on there. All right, this is the retreat point. If we need to fall back, we fall back. For crying out loud, come on. It would seem I'm way too tired to be recording right now. I don't know why I'm even trying, to be honest. I'm having all kinds of difficulties. Dead. Whoa. <laughs> Garm fell. Are you okay, girl? <laughs> yeah, I should have told you I was setting that, huh? You still love me? Dead Thalmor. And dead bandits. Well, we better search the bodies. Looking for anything, any clue. Keys. All right, so we've got at least four dead bandits and three dead Thalmor. A soldier and a just justice here. But look at the drawbridge is up. All right, girl. I'm going inside. You stay here. Let's see if we can make this climb. All right, we better go with the heavy duty arrows. Oh, 
Oh. Lots of dead. Looks like the uh, bandits may have put up a decent fight, actually. Thalmor orders. At this point, Etienne is getting very nervous that he may be too late. This was unexpected. He was expecting to find bandits, but to come here and find bandits who seem to be in a fight with Thalmor, that's no accident. in the back. Thalmor weren't messing around. Potion of Vigorous Healing might explain how he was able to take three arrows. Well, two arrows, I suppose. <clears throat> Cell is empty. Well, let's take what we can when we can. We don't know what we're going to encounter further up the tower. It's boarding great axe I don't need. Get rid of that. More dead Thalmor. Okay. Next level, here we go. Oh. Looks like there are some bandits that actually survived the attack. Alright, we can't take any chances with these guys. So... We are going to try our best not to give them any chance whatsoever. That guy who was walking patrol seemed to have heavy armor. Somehow these guys survived. The remnants of a bandit group, maybe? The lady we grabbed down by the river turned out to be a feisty one. 
Burbag thought he could beat some respect into her, but it looks like he used too strong a hand. The boss is not going to be happy when she hears about this. Well, doesn't say anything specifically about who we're looking for, but um, we'll take it as evidence nonetheless. Surprise. At this point, the keep is a dangerous enough place that Etienne's going to open fire on pretty much anything <laughs> to be safe. Well, we're certainly stocking up on elven arrows, thanks to the Thalmor raid. Okay. Top of the tower. More death. here. Damn. Well, the evidence would suggest that we're too late, that the Thalmor have raided this place and snatched him. This must be Fiola. literally no clues here at all except the obvious either the bandits we encountered downstairs fled and then came back after the battle was over or when their leader died, they cut a deal with the Thalmor somehow. And exchanged Vantis for their lives. I guess it doesn't really matter, but... Well, ladies and gentlemen, the plot thickens. 
Vantis has been snatched up by the Thalmor, and we have no idea where he is at this point. So the next course of action seems to be to head back to Riften, communicate our findings to Kerway, see if there's anything that she can do on the inside to help us get further along. It's pretty clear at this point that unless Maven and her people are out actively trying to hunt down Vantis, which it isn't, you know, it isn't a complete fantasy, fantasy to assume they might do that. They've certainly lost a lot of leverage by losing Vantis. But it's a lot less likely that there's going to be Oh, there's bandits on the outside. That there's going to be talk going on that we can take advantage of. Where did he go? He's leaving. Okay, we're going to let him we're going to let him head out. Look at him. Walking away, the lone survivor, really, of a slaughter here at the hands of the Thalmor. Well, in light of what we discovered inside the keep, Etienne has concluded that uh, he needs to get back to Riften with haste. Because our, uh, our trail... For Vantis has gone virtually cold. We're obviously able to conclude that the Thalmor have Vantis now, but no way of knowing where the Thalmor might have taken him. Now oh, relax, I'm not gonna take your rabbit. So the hope is if we can get back to Riften quickly 
get a message to Kerway about what happened. She'll have uh, some time to figure out what our next move is. The idea being, of course, that, you know, she'll work her angles from inside the lodge while Etienne works on the outside. And between the two of them, maybe they can figure out what's actually happening. So we're on our way back to Riften, and we're going to take this shortcut here that we had scouted previously. gets around. Don't mind us, big boy. Just passing through. Welcome back to the story, everybody. Took a couple of days off. Now we're back at it. And things are heating up a little bit, I think, for Etienne as he's... Now got kind of a focused mission. And that's really just this work that he's doing for... His sister, Kerway. And actually, I... Uh, I like that. I like to have... Um, you know, there there have been quite a few periods... In Etienne's recent history... Where things have been just kind of... Going bonkers. A lot of things happening all at once, um, a lot of competing interests, things like that. So being able to focus a little bit, get a little bit more clarity is certainly helpful. And while we still have all of these competing interests, that hasn't really changed at all. <laughs> Stealth bear. It's beginning to feel a little bit more, at least, like what we've got on our plate is manageable. Like, some of these objectives are going to kind of interlace, I guess, in a way that might be a bit easier to manage. Come on, girl. Let's go up this way. So the objective here is we're going to go back, get a message to Kerway so that she can start working on that from her side. Then we are going to go and check in with the Thieves Guild and uh, inform them of what happened on the mission we did for Maven. And then, uh, you know, we'll take take care of a few things around town, and hopefully by the time we get through that, we will have heard back from Kerway, and, and hopefully we'll have some direction there. If we don't, if she's unable to get any information for us, then we may have to uh, regroup and just try and do our own thing. All right, we made it back. All right, girl. Yeah, I know, right? Um, let's see. Time check. All right, middle of the afternoon. No rest for the wicked. Let's move.
Okay. What's with all the bootless storm cloaks now? This is the second patrol of bootless guards or whatever that I've seen. I don't know if they're rifting guards or storm cloaks. They must be rifting guards, right? Didn't they have the cross daggers? Hey. I'd be a lot warmer and a lot happier with a belly full of mead. How come they're not wearing boots? Is it some kind of holiday or tradition? Don't think you can barter with me like one of those damned shopkeepers. I'm trying to barter with you. All right, off we go. All right, girl. You got to deliver a message. So at this point, Etienne is going to write a simple message and uh, tuck into Garm's collar, stating uh, that he had followed the trail and that the trail had gone cold at Mistwatch. So he's going to describe his encounter with Telrav, the letter he found, where it led him, and the end result, where we saw obvious signs of a battle, and it looked as though Vantis may have been there and been snatched by the Thelmor. That's the assumption we're making right now. We have no actual proof that Vantis was there other than what was in Telrav's letter. So um, we'll explain that in the briefest of terms. And we're going to send the dog off. Now, I can't actually send Garm anywhere. So I'm going to send Garm by just having her wait here. This is kind of my roleplay simulation of Garm going off and doing her own thing, right? Sometimes, for the sake of the story, I will hide these little things from you. So it, it doesn't impact the story experience. But given the fact that this is a Let's Play that is all about us discussing the ideas of how to roleplay some of these things and how to put them together with what we have available to us, I am showing you this now so that you kind of get a sense for how I'm playing through this. Depending on which version of Skyrim you're playing and what mods you're using, you may have, may have other options. Um, that you can use. This works for me. Does the job. Okay. Oh, it's you. Come to extort more from me? Medesia, what's this bill for 300 septims? Begging your pardon, my lord. The wife will run up. All right. Come to see. What brings you to Balaman today? Repair? Purchase? Hmm. Blades, helmets, pretty much anything to suit your needs. I've got a few things that I need to offload. This barbarian armor, for example. Sword of Embers. I don't recall if that's an enchantment we have, so I'm going to hang on to that to ensure. If you need any more smithing work, come see me again. I suppose that's a noble cause. I'll settle this bill at the end. Okay. Of the so, let's do a quick inventory. 288 arrows. That seems like plenty, doesn't it? <laughs> okay. Good enough. Okay. Just kind of going through. Seeing where we're at with stuff. Okay. Now, there's a couple of things I want to check out while we're here. 
One is I I salvaged I salvaged some armor. This hunter armor. Okay, so this requires fur plate to upgrade. I'm interested in just having a look at it. The snow bear armor is corundum. Pathfinder gauntlets are steel. Interesting. Working at the Riften Fishery is tough, but I'll just put some coin in my pocket. All right, let's have a quick look. The hunter armor is interesting. Uh, the male version of it could be an interesting option. It's not not a bad look at all. It, I mean, it certainly looks very Etienne. It's it's obviously kind of you know <laughs> thrown together, a lot of overlapping pieces, stuff like that. I don't know if I'll use it or not. But I think I'm going to hang on to it. Because I sort of like it. Um, the other one was the snow bear armor. Which is also not bad. Oh, it's you. Come to extort more from me? No, just trying on outfits. Want to join me? Want to try on an outfit? Okay. I do like this one. Again, I might modify it a little bit myself. Maybe remove the horn. Not big on the horn. But other than that, it's got kind of a nice look to it. This is also one that I think would be an interesting candidate for... Um, Retexturing myself. If we want to get a peek at what the thing looks like, kind of out of the box, it, the bandolier is something I'm adding after the fact, right? So that's not part of the deal. Ladesi, have you heard the Imperials might be headed this way? So not bad. Pretty pretty rugged looking stuff. Looks well used. Sure. So, I don't know if I'll use it or not, but I'm certainly going to hang on to it. It's kind of interesting. All right. Oh, I know why you don't want me at the bunkhouse. You're all pissed. All right. Anybody notice anything? Anything different about Riften? This is the first time I've come in in a long time and haven't seen either a vampire or a thief battle. Interesting. Looking to stay alive? Why take a chance? All right. So we've got a message off to Kerway. Now we gotta. We can't really afford to delay any further. Getting down to the Thieves' Guild. Nobody's going to talk to Etienne like that. He's lucky he doesn't get punched. I sort of feel like Etienne probably has a reputation for being aloof. 
And I think that's in some ways because he is aloof. <laughs> you know, I mean, he he is with certain people. Um, he's not the sort of person who lets people in. In terms of, you know, getting to know people. Rainy Elf must have been... in the cistern area. <clears throat> so there's been some discussion, quite a bit of discussion actually, going on in the comment threads about at the end, his, his attitude and how hard he is on himself and how he should give himself a break and all of this stuff. Well, sure. Um, maybe that's true. But the person who's hard on themselves is the last person who's going to give themselves a break. I mean, there has to be something, some kind of a major life-changing event, I would think, in order for them to think that differently. the street is that poor Sabjorn has found himself in White Run's prison. How unfortunate for him. Right. Exactly. Now you're beginning to see how our little system works. Maven sent word that you discovered something else while you were out there. Something important to the guild? Yeah. Same symbol from Golden Glow was involved. And this is beyond coincidence. First Arangoth, and now Sabjorn. Someone's trying to take us down by driving a wedge between Maven and the guild. What can we do about that? Mercer thinks he knows a way to identify this new thorn in our side. He wants to meet with you right away. And if I were you, I'd hurry. I've never seen him this angry before. So yeah, Etienne is hard on himself, but he's also a, he's, he's got a lot of um, emotional scars. He's got a lot of sort of learned bad behaviors, right? Um, bad kind of social and emotional habits that he's built up over the years that just don't go away overnight. And that's why the story is called The Passage, It, you know? It, it takes a while for a character who is, I would think, uh, as damaged as he is in some ways to change that or recover that. Or maybe you never change that. Maybe what actually happens is you, you just learn a new way to live with whatever it is that's bothering you. Ah, there you are. I've consulted my contacts regarding the information you recovered from Golden Glow Estate, but no one can identify that symbol. It would seem our adversary is attempting to take us apart indirectly by angering Maven Blackbriar. Very clever. So, friend, you were abandoned, huh? All right. Yeah. What of it? Maybe we should recruit them. You jest, but they've been able to avoid identification for years. They're obviously well-funded, driven, and patient. Just don't mistake my admiration for complacency. Our nemesis is going to pay dearly. How's that going to happen? Because even after all their posturing and planning, they've made a mistake. The parchment you recovered mentions a Gajal lie. According to my sources, that's an old alias used by one of our contacts. His real name is Gullum I. Alright, where do I begin? 
Golomai is our inside man at the East Empire Company in solitude. I'm betting he acted as a go-between for the sale of Golden Glow Estate and that he can finger our buyer. Get out there, shake him down, see what you come up with. Talk to Brynjolf before you leave if you have any questions. Great. Well, we're probably, uh... Mercer Frey doesn't realize it, Brynjolf doesn't realize it, but... Probably the worst candidate they could think of sending to Solitude. That's Rune. You humans all look alike. I can't believe Gullamai's mixed up in all this. That Argonian couldn't find his tail with both hands. Don't get me wrong, he could scam a beggar out of his last septum, but he's no mastermind. Well, is he gonna give me trouble? Trouble? He's one of the most stubborn lizards I've ever met. You have your work cut out for you. All right. So how do I get him to talk then? You're going to have to buy him off. It's the only way to get his attention. If that fails, follow him and see what he's up to. If I know Gullam I, he's in way over his head and you'll be able to use it as leverage. Okay. All right. He's going to owe us for the betrayal. Aye, he does indeed. And with his fingers in the East Empire Company's pie, we'll make good use of that debt. If I'm not being clear enough, that means we don't want him killed. For now, just keep on his tail and he's bound to step into something he can't scrape off his boot. <laughs> All right. Hmm. All right, if I get information from him, then what next? Just head right back to the guild and get the information to Mercer. Nothing else is more important. If you discover Gullam Eyes holding out on us and has more loot stashed away than he claims, we'd find that information quite valuable as well. All right. How is he an asset to the guild? Gullamai works in the East Empire Company warehouse. He helps maintain all of the shipments of goods that goes in and out of solitude. That means he has the pick of the litter from some of the finest goods to grace Skyrim shores. He isn't exactly in the guild, but he pays us a cut of all the stuff he lifts from the warehouse. Alright. Good luck in solitude. Keep Gullamai alive, right. but remind him who we are. All right, son of a bitch. Well, Solitude is honestly the last place that we would want to be going right now. But it would seem we don't have a lot of choice. All right, so it is back to the shack we go for some food and some rest. And we have to start thinking through our mission to Solitude and packing our gear, figuring out what we need for this mission. And uh, hopefully receiving a letter back from Kerway in the very near future. What do you need?
All right. Well, I think to start with, we've become exceedingly thirsty. Okay, eat a full meal, and then let's get some rest. All right, 7 p.m. Well, 8 p.m., I guess. Time for another meal. All right, we need to figure out what our approach is going to be to solitude. 